please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. Ta-da! The next project bike for Dave Moss Tuning, a Ducati Multistrada 1200S with Olins and electronic suspension, 5,757 miles, which has Davies numbers for those that might recall. Um, and it came from a good friend of mine, James, who is onto a different bike and doing different things. So this is my first Multistrada purchase, never owned one before. So I'm bringing a completely clean sheet to the table. Um, and the second part that's most important for me to help everybody is this is my first adventure bike with electronic suspension. So we have different modes. We have different settings within each mode. So there's a lot of tuning to be done via the dash. The only manual adjustment is gonna be fork preload, which is on top of the forks and it is the big blue anodized nut. And at that point, you've got to detach the wires to be able to do that adjustment. So how are we gonna approach this situation? Well, firstly, I need to see how I fit it. Based on the ergonomics, I need to correct what I need to correct. Then I need to do a pre-ride inspection. What is working? What doesn't seem right to me? What is questionable? What would I fix? Then the third piece of the puzzle is once all of that is done, and I am 100% confident about the first ride on the bike, then there's gonna be a dial-in procedure that I'll follow. This will obviously create a ton of video content on this bike, some of which will be unique to the ADV touring sector, and some of it will be completely transferable all the way across every category of motorcycle because there's certain principles involved. The initial overview of the bike, because it was very low mileage, it was service, so it has a brand new battery. It has brand new fluids throughout the Desmo service was done, so it has new belts, and that's about all I know. So I'm gonna go through it very carefully in my own way to make sure that when I ride this bike, that I will be 100% confident about its fitment, that I fit it, I'm comfortable, and that we can start on the dialing procedure. Obvious to say there's gonna be a ton of content for everybody, which is really gonna be great to be able to share information and help you with specifics about different bikes. First thing, let's see how I fit this ergonomically. Now, as far as ergonomics go, your calf should never touch your hamstring. That just makes it a lot more comfortable. If I go to the middle of my foot, it opens up even more, so this becomes a much more open angle, which is gonna make it more comfortable for me. That way, if I am on the bike for a while, I can move from foot peg on the ball of my foot to the middle of my foot and not get contact here. So that's the most important part for me first. The next piece of the puzzle is belly button to handlebar, because that's a measurement that most people don't think about. And the easiest way to assess it, let's get the bar straight, is to know where you are comfortable. And that means make a fist and put your hands here so your knuckles touch the grip. And in the picture, if it's wrong, then your spine will be facing the wrong way. So are you upright? here or slightly canted forward. Then move to the grip and obviously then your spine comes more forward and then go to your wrist. Now that given this particular measurement between my belly button and steering stem because it's quite a short reach means that now I'm in a sport bag position so that won't work for me. So if I go back to my hands and I keep my head still, I am looking straight ahead. So as far as my spine angle is concerned, here is good. If I go here, 
I feel like I'm actually inverted, like my shoulders are behind my hips. So that's not gonna work. So as far as bar position goes, then what we have here is gonna work fine for me. And that distance can be changed with the roll radius of the handlebars backwards and forwards towards you. So you can change it, which means you can change the bar height from low to higher. Now the goal with a handlebar is to try to get the grip level with the ground. That's the goal. That fist angle is unnatural. That angle is unnatural. So having your hand flat requires this end of the bar and the grip to be level with the ground. If that's the case, then that's fine. The other thing to consider is the width of the bar. So if you do this all day on a computer, your natural position is with your second knuckle level with your shoulder joint, because that's what you do every day. If you work with your hands constantly, then your natural position is for your entire fist to be past and outside your shoulder joint, which will reflect here. So the second part of the test, when you sit on the bike, is put your second knuckle in line with your shoulder joint. And for me, because I work with my hands all the time, that is really, really wrong. It, it's very, very uncomfortable. So at this point, move my hands out. So now, get my thumb level with my shoulder blade. And that still feels like my arms are coming in this way. Then get my fist outside my shoulder joint and it's much more comfortable. So the width of the bar is definitely gonna be very much in my favor given what I do every day and given the width of my shoulders. First data point on the cockpit that I want to get is width of the handlebar. That's measured from end of grip, left, end of grip, right. Make sure you're in the same place so the center area of both ends works pretty well. In this case, we're at 82 centimeters or 32 and 5 sixteenths, right around there. So that's our known handlebar width. So I've got that data point captured. Now the next one is gonna be anatomical, but it's gonna be belly button to handlebar. Having a backslash sport truck or something similar to that, or of course, in this case, the Ducati comes with a center stand is essential because you're gonna to need to have both feet on the pegs. Do not cheat. Let it go. So in my relaxed position, that is 51 centimeters or dead on 20 inches. So that gives me distance to the bar, width of the bar, gives me a nice triangle. Now that triangle, when you figure that out, is what you want on every single motorcycle you're gonna ride. It's really important to know that that data point is correct because you're not stressing your torso, you're not stressing your spine, you're not keeping your hands way outside of where they belong, or you're not elbows up and hands in because the bar's too narrow. Mountain biking, critical, getting this correct. So don't short circuit it on a road bike of any description, let alone an off-road bike. That's even more important. So knowing this piece of data will transfer to every bike you know. So take a minute and get it. Next part of the pre-ride assessment is gonna be the brake lever. So if we hold the grip and we relax our arms, that forearm angle is where the brake lever should be. So what that means is you stick your fingers out straight in level with the forearm. 
So you can see if I go touch the lever that my fingers are dropping considerably below my wrist, which is definitely a big no-no because if you're here, you're pulling a lever in an upward angle. Whereas if you're here, you're pulling the angle correctly because it's in line with your forearm and your hand. So there's a big change we need here. Being prepared. In this case, we have a five millimeter Allen. So the first question that's most important is sometimes these perch mounts are pinned. So they cannot go anywhere and you don't get any movement. So can we move it? No, because there's a pin in there. There's the top, there's the bottom. So in its highest position, we'll just go ahead and snug that up. Is it in the highest position right for me? No. So I have two options. One is to take that pin physically out of the bar so I can put it where I want it. Or secondly, take the bracket that the pin locates into and then the hole that's there, elongate it in the direction. And that is, I want it to go this way. So it's center down. So it gives me the radius to go up and down. So for somebody with a mill bit in a drill press, piece of cake. You can be done in three to five seconds. For those that don't have that capability, then this is a much harder task. And obviously the easiest thing to do is have that brass pin removed from the handlebar so you can put this where you want. Couple options there, but for now, I cannot get my brake lever where I want it. The other piece, it is supposed to go there, right on the end of my second digit. So when I put my hand over it, it's right in the middle, it's or very close to my second knuckle. And that's not good either. So at this point, can we, let's get rid of the five millimeter Allen for now and I'll tighten it all back up. Can we get this any further out at all? That's it. That's our maximum. So now at maximum is perfect. But what it isn't is at the right angle where I want it. And we're not that far off. So I am going to go ahead and get that machined and changed so that that hole gets elongated in the bottom direction so the lever rotates up. The brake positioning is critical. One is the correct angle, so when you pull, you get good feel on your fingertip because we're one of the last generations to use pens. Smashing keys with fingertips doesn't give you a lot of sensitivity with cursive writing, using a pen, etc. So getting that angle correct is critical. Then the second piece is the reach. If it's too close to you, your first movement is this, and then this, and then that. So having the correct distance allows you to get to the lever quicker. And that means much better response to a braking situation, period. Probably odds on that the clutch might be pinned as well, but we've got to go find that out. And if it is, I'll take both pieces with me. Huh? Actually, the clutch is at the right angle. I don't have to do it on the clutch side. I'll just take the brake piece with me and have that milled. Again, I am trying to get the bike perfect for my anatomy. Now, if my spine was considerably longer, my arm angle will be deeper. And so this will work for me, but I'm not. And then if you've got a much shorter spine than me, then obviously your hand's gonna be up here. So take the time before you ride a new bike to you, whether it's new or used, to actually get yourself fitted to it properly. So when you go out, brake is correct angle, distance to the lever is correct, rear brake is set correctly. We know brake pressure, brake king is 100% functional. Getting the cockpit 
your feet, the shifter, all in the right position. Doesn't take that long. So that when you ride, you're not fighting discomfort, which accelerates fatigue. So take the time, make the effort.